now we are in First Thessalonians, and today we are in chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, the, the epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians, one of the most outstanding documents. We're going to get there in the next, by tomorrow evening, we'll go to chapter 4. And you see why. And chapter 4 and chapter 5, where you see about the issues of the rapture, the swift sudden departure of the saints. But before we get there... We want to see some life application issues, kingdom principles that Paul exposited in his epistle to the uh, Thessalonians. We'll take that and we'll take the announcements after. Stay with us. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am. Lord, feed us with your word until we want no more. Have your way. Bless us with this truth. In Yeshua's name, amen. In First Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul began to speak to them about the visit of his aide and mentee and special assistant, everything rolled together, Timothy. He said in verse 1, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear the absence from them, the pressures they were going through, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. You know, there are times in life of a minister you need to pull out from activity, pull out from crowd, pull out from people to be left alone with the Lord. And those times of retreat are times of recharging. There are times of recalibration. There are times of refiring. We need to develop the holy habit of knowing when to pull back, when to retreat, when to go into isolation lockdown, whatever you want to call it, not just the one imposed by the law, by the pandemic, but one that is strategic in nature, that at times comes, there are times you need to just we retreat away. And by the grace of the Lord, there are retreat centers across the world. And if you want one in Africa, that we know where you can just be locked out from everything else, you can send us an inbox if you want to go there. And the Lord will, will guide you to where you can just have some rest and refreshment, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of life. He said, we're left alone at Athens and sent rather Timotheus, our brother, a minister of Elohim, and our fellow laborer in the gospel. Three things Timothy was to him. Brother, minister of the gospel, fellow laborer in the gospel of Yeshua. To do what? To establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So Timothy was these three things in co-laboring with Paul the Apostle. The Lord doesn't want us to go and make people our employees or make people, you know, our cocktails. He's looking for people who will grow to be our co-laborers, who will take their place with us in the assignment the Lord gave, and the, the grace of Elohim in them will make a way for them, and they don't need to play any eye service. Just get on with the lane. Take your responsibility. He said, him, he's called me brother. He called me minister and a fellow laborer in the gospel of Yeshua. What was he to do? He was to go and establish them and to comfort you concerning your faith. When you are sent from headquarter or anywhere that authority resides into any part of the world, you are going to comfort the brethren. You are going to establish them in the faith and that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. So part of what Timothy was to do is to encourage them not to be moved by what they see. Whether in the case of Paul, the bonds, he was in prison at this time, that nobody should be moved by that. Or even whatever they themselves were going through, nobody should be moved by these afflictions, whether of Paul or of them. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereon to. Paul had taught them that affliction is part of the gospel. Suffering is part of the gospel. It's an intrinsic part of it because suffering does not destroy. Suffering takes away the dross. And the Lord has appointed us that if we are faithful and if we can come to a place of confidence in him and rest in the Lord, his glory will go with us. And even if we are going through the fire, it will not burn us. If we are going through the waters, you know, we're not going to be drowned. And the Lord will make a way by his grace. He says that we are appointed on to verse 4. For verily, when we're with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass. And you know, say Paul told them, 
faithful ministers are not supposed to paint a rosy uh, pie in the sky picture of the gospel to the believers. Tell them about the contention between light and darkness, the contention between righteousness and iniquity, the contention between kingdom culture and worldly culture. Tell them so that they can know when they see those things, they will know that this is what they were taught. All these you know, fake or flaky gospel that is being preached that has no substance and people just go and learn, uh, you know, cram some, uh, you know, uh, um, firecracker promises and there's no substance to it. It doesn't make any sense. Paul said, we told you that tribulation was part of the Christian journey. And he said, it came to pass, you know, for this cause. Verse 5, when I could no longer forbear, I seem to know your faith when Paul began to feel the pressure to know how they were doing. He says, I sent to know your faith. He sent someone to know. He sent Timothy to know your faith. Why? Lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor is in vain. Paul was a man who exercised responsibility. That's a sign of sonship. Sonship is not just a claim. You don't just claim, I'm a son of Elohim. Sonship connotes maturity. Sonship connotes a state where you know who you are in him and who he is in you. Then you take responsibility over the estate of your father. The sphere of influence the Lord has ordained for you, you take responsibility. There will be powers of darkness to resist you. Don't tell me that because of darkness, then you cannot do the work of the Lord. Darkness cannot comprehend light. This is a kingdom principle. Darkness cannot comprehend light. It's appointed that once light is switched on, darkness must give way. So don't get scared because of occultists and shamans and native doctors and uh, all kinds of shangomas. Don't get scared when they are there. The Lord by himself will take them out. But you must develop a hard disposition that refuses to cower before the powers of darkness. Fear will paralyze you. Fear will confuse you. But if you will take the spirit of faith, then you are going to walk through. For he said, if you walk through the waters, it will, not sw- it will not sink you. If you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. Fire does not destroy. Fire refines. And the more fires you go through, the more refinement takes place. Things are plucked out of you. You comfort like gold. Say for this reason, for this cause. When I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and labor will be in vain. Paul so cared for them. He didn't want the labor amongst them to be in vain. He didn't want to take the chance that the tempter, Satan, will go and confuse them away from the purpose of the Father. And our labor be in vain. Men and brethren, I want to say this to you in 2022. Your labor will not be in vain. In your family, in your ministry, in your business, the marketplace where the Lord has planted you, your labor will not be in vain. Your labor will be productive. Your labor will be a fruit. It will be abundant fruit because Yeshua said in John 15, 16, you have not called me, but I have called you that you should go and bring forth fruit and your fruit shall remain. That is the promise of the Lord. So your labor will not be in vain. No one is going to take you out before your time. No one is going to divert you away from divine purpose. No one is going to confuse you. No one is going to sink your boat. Your boat is the one Yeshua is in. The waves must obey the master of the ocean and the seas. Then he said in verse 6, But now when Timotheus came from you to us, when he sent Timothy, Timothy now returned to Paul and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. That was awesome. So when he sent Timothy to know their state, Timothy returned to tell Paul, these guys, they remember you, they desire to see you. Oh, these people were doing well. And that brought great encouragement to, 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 to Paul. A leader always rejoices to hear good testimonies concerning the people. When the people you send come back to say, no, the guys are doing well. He says, he brought us good tidings of your faith and charity. These two things in the life of any believer 
will see you through anything. A life of faith, a life of charity. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Without faith, it is impossible to please Elohim, for he that cometh to Elohim must believe that he is, and is the reward of them that diligently seek him. And charity is the principal thing. Outside of charity, nothing can stand. So a congregation that walks in faith, they do not bother about what they see. They know whom they believe, and they base their faith on him. And a charity, a, a ministry that is also driven by charity, love of Elohim, love of one another, and excessive love, the one that covers multitude of sin. If you have these two pillars, kingdom pillars, a congregation will rise, will grow, will be strong, will be powerful. That you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. That is awesome. They had good remembrance. These people had excellent remembrance of Paul, the apostle they desired to see. That was mutual. You know what, brothers and sisters, that's same with us. We desire to see Apostle uh, uh, Lehuli and his wife all the way in Fiji Islands. We desire to see them. We desire to welcome them to London in August. We desire to see Apostle Jacob in India, Apostle Alonso in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Pastor David in, in Malaysia. You know, our uh, sister, pa Apostle Christian in Hong Kong, we desire to see Apostle Ratan Raut in uh, Nepal and Vive Kumar in, in Nepal. We desire to see the brethren across, uh, uh, you know, India, uh, Pastor Shio Kumars. We desire to see Apostle Paulus, Gabriel, and um, Providence Maggie Tawadros in Egypt and, you know, Teacher Sima Kale in UAE with our sister Ramona and uh, Samantha. We desire to see the brethren from South Sudan, the brethren in Ethiopia, the brethren in Uganda, the brethren in Kenya, the brethren in Rwanda, the brethren in, 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 in Burundi, the brethren in Tanzania, the brethren in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, in Malawi, in Angola. We desire to matter that we are born by different moms, the same blood of the Yeshua Hamashiach, the blood of the covenant is strong, is stronger than the natural blood. We desire to see each other. That is why brothers and sisters at Open Gate 2022, we are going to be meeting each other at least visually and virtually. We are going to see each other on the Zoom platform. Brothers and sisters, this is awesome. I'm going to stop here tomorrow morning. We continue this. Then I'll make some announcements. Listen to these. The epistles are real life situations. They are real life, you know, case studies. And the Lord wants us to know the principles that are unpacked in the epistles. These are kingdom principles. Kingdom is about life. It's not about religion. It's not about, you know, dry religious texts. It's simple. Kingdom principles that we need to get on. Brothers and sisters, I'll pray now and I'll make a short announcement. And thank you, Arise, you are here. Just a moment, let me just pray. Father in heaven, the great I am, who I am, we give you all praise, all glory, all adoration for who you are, for your grace, your glory. Look at what you are unpacking for us in the uh, Paul's epistle to the Thessalonians. Let these words be flesh in us. Start with those of us who are in ministry and get on to the brethren. In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same at nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or 
anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the Yes course or be, do the master class, you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube, gsom.tv and we also have a Telegram channel, gsom media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com. We love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.